This is the weekly run-up on EAC News Channel. We look back at the past week in the Kingdom of Wonder. A very good evening to you. I am Dekanin. Prime Minister Hun Sen has ordered Phnom Penh Capital Hall to look into the possibilities of launching buses to transport people to various localities in order to reduce the cost of transport due to an increase in the price of taxis. In a special audio message sent on Monday, Prime Minister Hun Sen urged people to continue to be aware of COVID-19 during Phnom Penh, in which he also ordered Phnom Penh Capital Hall to examine the possibility of providing transportation for people during the festival, which would also help to reduce congestion on roads and ease the cost of travel for citizens. <laughs> ជំបិតប្រជាជនរដ្ឋជនទៅតាមបណ្ដាខេត្តដោយដែលយើងបានធ្វើនៅមុនbefore the COVID-19 outbreak, Prime Minister Hun Sen also ordered Phnom Penh Capital Hall to designate buses to transport people to their provinces during the New Year and during Phnom Penh. This order was made to reduce the cost burden of increased taxi prices as people have to travel a lot during the festivals. Prime Minister Hun Sen, the chairman of ASEAN 2022, has officially announced the establishment of the ASEAN Economic Club to help promote closer ASEAN integration. Speaking at the ASEAN Leadership Forum on Monday morning, the Prime Minister stated that the ASEAN Economic Club can contribute to the region by participating in monitoring and evaluation and making professional recommendations on the implementation of agreements such as free trade agreements, regional agreements and others. This club will play an important role in promoting closer ASEAN economic integration. The idea of establishing the ASEAN Economic Club was raised by the president of the KSI Asia Pacific Strategic Institute, Tansri Michael Yeo, to Prime Minister Hun Sen last week on Thursday. Yeo stated that the establishment of the ASEAN Economic Club will help provide input to ASEAN and act as a bridge of institutional relations with ASEAN in other areas. Prime Minister Hun Sen, the chairman of ASEAN 2022, has reminded all ASEAN member countries to consider the well-being of the people and focus on maintaining stability and peace in the region, avoiding the fire of war. ESC News reporter Dashana Gojin has more details. Speaking at the opening ceremony of the 2022 ASEAN Leadership and Partnership Forum held under the theme Partnerships for a Cohesive and Responsive ASEAN on Monday morning, Prime Minister Hun Sen stated that socioeconomic development cannot be achieved without full stability and peace. In this sense, ASEAN must avoid war because there are no winners or losers in war, only the destruction and loss of life. <laughs> Prime Minister Hun Sen, as a key founder of Peace for Cambodia, urged ASEAN countries to act as role models and work together to ensure peace and stability in the region, as current geopolitical competition continues to intensify. The ASEAN chair also urged ASEAN member countries to adhere to neutrality and act as a common forum for dialogue and cooperation with the strengthening of regional openness, transparency, and the rule of law. The Prime Minister's remarks highlighted the impact the Russia-Ukraine war has had, leading to an increasingly fragmented economy and world relations, and geopolitical competition in certain strategic areas, including in Asia. These issues will continue to pose problems and risks to regional and global stability and prosperity. Darshana Gauchan, EAC News. The head of the royal government of Cambodia, Prime Minister Hun Sen, has decided to suspend the celebration of the Royal Water Festival for 2022 on a national level, previously scheduled for the 7th to the 9th of November. However, provinces and capitals throughout the country can still organize celebrations at the local level for entertainment and tourism purposes. EAC News reporter Darshana Gauchan has the details. 
This decision was made at the plenary cabinet meeting chaired by Prime Minister Hun Sen on Friday morning. A statement released by the Council of Ministers did not specify the exact reason for the suspension, but it was likely due to concerns about the spread of COVID-19 in the country. According to the statement, the organization of the Water Festival for the people in the capitals and provinces throughout the country is still possible, including for the Chum Ben Festival in September. For the Water Festival, boats, floating lanterns, and the Moon Festival in November can entertain the people, enhance the tourism environment, and also provide opportunities for people to earn money. The annual Royal Water Festival was scheduled for 7th to 9th November 2022. This is the third year in a row that the Water Festival has now been suspended after festivities were cancelled in 2020 and 2021 due to the COVID-19 crisis. Darshana Gauchan, EAC News. Prime Minister Hun Sen has ordered the Minister of Social Affairs to include the people who received compensation to relocate to Runta Ai Village in Mentir State District of Simrit Province to also receive social equity cards. EC News reporter Dashana Gojin has the details. Speaking at a public forum during a meeting with residents in Runta Ai Village on Tuesday morning, Prime Minister Hun Sen said that the people who lived in the Angkor Resort area were relocated to this village in order to preserve the world heritage status of the Angkor temples. The Prime Minister thanked all those who agreed to accept the relocation compensation and live in this village. At the same time, the Prime Minister confirmed that the people who move to live in this area will also receive social equity and social assistance cards for COVID-19 to provide them with additional support. He stated that this policy for those who move to live in Runta Aik village will last for 10 years starting from now. According to the Prime Minister, there are around 6,000 families who have been relocated from Siemrip City and the Angkor Resort area to live in Runta Aik Village. Darshana Galchen, EAC News. Residents of Runta Aik Village, Bentisre District, Siemrip Province, will receive a decent living through the provision of new infrastructure and facilities such as roads, water supply, electricity, hospitals, schools, markets, and internet services. ESC News reporter Dashana Gojin has more. Speaking at a public forum during a meeting with residents in Runta Aik village in Siemrip province on Tuesday morning, Prime Minister Hun Sen ordered the preparation of new infrastructure and facilities to meet the daily living needs of the residents who relocated to Runta Aik village. The Prime Minister ordered for a new road to be paved that connects to the existing road that goes into the village to facilitate the movement of people. ផ្លូវតម្រាប់ទាប់ជាប់តាមភូមិនេះទៅឈុះឆាយវាយើងបានធ្វើចំណួនat the same time, the Prime Minister also approved of establishing new clean water projects to the village in order to provide the village with access to a clean water base. Regarding education, the Prime Minister ordered the establishment of new secondary schools that can meet the needs of residents in the village and also ensure a full education for children. The overarching new infrastructure construction project at Runta Aik Village includes a new three-story school building with 18 rooms and a management building with three rooms. This school will be organized as a secondary school and dormitory for teachers, with two floors and 20 rooms available for 20 teachers. Regarding health infrastructure, the project involves building three new health centers, one for general illnesses, one for maternal health, and one that will also act as a 20-room apartment building. In addition, eight markets will be constructed for the local people to do business, along with new telephone poles and internet service poles. Darshana Gauchan, EAC News. 
Prime Minister Hun Sen has said that from the beginning until now, no one has been able to estimate or properly predict his strategies, not even political analysts. He made the statement while speaking at a public forum during a meeting with residents in Runta Ait village in Simrat province on Tuesday morning. Prime Minister Hun Sen stated that one of his strengths is that others cannot correctly predict or evaluate what he strategizes. He said to all his political analysts and rivals that if his strategies cannot be properly evaluated, then even the next generation of his rivals will not be able to defeat him. ໂດຍລະບາຍອອກຈັ່ງກົມອ້າຍເກປັນສມານຖ້າເຈືອງດາວສາຍໂຕຈົ່ງນາຫຼືດາວຕູກໂຕຈົ່ງນາດາວກົ
If it's happening and you need to know about it, you'll get it all right here. EAC News brings you updates and breaking news in English across all of our platforms and channels. The EAC News app, YouTube, Facebook, Telegram, Twitter, and our website www.eacnews.asia. Join me and the rest of the EAC News team every day on your favorite channels. EAC News, Cambodia made clear. Prime Minister Hun Sen, as the chairman of ASEAN in 2022, has urged all ASEAN member states to strive to implement what have been mutually agreed upon and continue to negotiate market access to attract the participation of major economies and the Regional Comprehensive Economic Partnership Agreement. EAC News reporter Nashana Gojin has more. At the opening of the 54th ASEAN Economic Ministers' Meeting and related meetings held in Siem Reap on Wednesday morning, Prime Minister Hun Sen said that at a time when the world is facing many conflicts for development, ASEAN must give greater importance to maintaining trade systems based on the rule of law, the principles of globalization, the mechanisms of multilateralism, and regional liberalization of trade and investment against protectionism, enhancing regional and global supply chain resilience, along with connectivity and logistics, building a digital economy, protecting the environment, using clean energy and striving for sustainable development, maintaining food security, along with the fight against COVID-19 and greater recovery efforts to form a resilient and sustainable regional and global economy. At the same time, ASEAN should continue to enhance ties with external partners based on the principles of equality and mutual benefit through maximizing the benefits of established agreements, especially the full and effective implementation of the Regional Comprehensive Economic Partnership Agreement, which entered into force on 1 January 2022. The Prime Minister said that member countries should strive to implement their commitments and continue to negotiate market access to attract the participation of other major economies under this agreement. In connection with the RCEP agreement, Cambodia is still interested in establishing the RCEP ASEAN Secretariat in its territory. The RCEP agreement, which researchers have evaluated as beneficial to Cambodian and regional trade, entered into force on 1 January 2022. Through this agreement, Cambodia will be able to export goods to 15 countries, including the 10 ASEAN member states and additional ASEAN partners, including China, Japan, Korea, Australia, and New Zealand, accounting for 28% of the total world trade volume. Many major commodities of agricultural, processed, and industrial goods will be allowed to be imported to these countries with an average duty exemption of more than 90% for Cambodia. In addition to benefits from exporting, under this agreement, Cambodia will also benefit from the transfer of technology, knowledge, and new skills from foreign direct investment, as well as the creation of new jobs for Cambodians. According to a study by the Economic Research Institute for ASEAN and East Asia, through this free trade agreement, Cambodia is expected to see an annual 7.3% growth in exports, 23.4% in investment, and a 2% increase in the GDP. Darshana Gauchan, EAC News. The Prime Minister of Cambodia and Chairman of ASEAN in 2022, Prime Minister Hun Sen, has highlighted the ongoing potential of the ASEAN region even at a time when the world is facing a major crisis over sanctions imposed on Russia by the European Union and its allies. During a meeting with the Permanent Secretary of the Ministry of Economy and Finance of Brunei in Siem Reap, Prime Minister Hun Sen said that after the world began to recover from the COVID-19 pandemic, a new crisis arose from the economic turmoil caused by sanctions imposed on Russia following Russia's invasion of Ukraine. The Prime Minister stressed that these sanctions are affecting countries around the whole world, including Cambodia. 
However, he said that he also sees how Cambodia continues to achieve increased trade in the region, which he said reflects the high potential of ASEAN. The Prime Minister's assistant in Sopal Light told reporters after the meeting that the current main opportunities highlighted include an increase in trade in the region, especially trade between Cambodia and Vietnam, trade between Cambodia and Thailand, trade between Cambodia and Laos, along with increased trade with other countries in the region as well. In this regard, the Prime Minister advised the delegation from Brunei on which recommendations to take in order to expand trade within the framework of the ASEAN Free Trade Agreement, complementary to trade with other countries, including under the framework of the Asia-Europe meeting as well. The Prime Minister of Cambodia and the Chairman of ASEAN in 2022, Prime Minister Hun Sen, has urged the ASEAN Minister of Energy to consider connecting ASEAN power transmission lines and gas pipelines through ASEAN member countries to achieve legal harmonization of technical standards and local power connections. EEC News reporter Nashana Gojin has more. Addressing the 40th ASEAN Energy Ministers Meeting and ASEAN Energy Business Forum 2022, Prime Minister Hun Sen made four suggestions to contribute to the development of new initiatives promoting participation in all regional energy transition activities and projects by promoting the implementation of the ASEAN Power Transmission Line and Gas Pipeline through ASEAN countries, promoting the implementation of policies, laws, and regulations for clean energy, and protecting the environment, managing natural resources resources, expanding international cooperation and participation to achieve the ASEAN Energy Cooperation 2021-2025 Action Plan. He further added, In the face of these challenges, ASEAN as well as the world needs to pay attention to the energy transition, which is a key task in promoting socioeconomic rehabilitation and development, life and strength. The ASEAN community has set out its regional development ambitions to support economic growth and the sharing of renewable energy. ASEAN as a region aims to achieve 23% renewable energy use by 2024, and one way to reach that goal is through interregional and commercial connectivity. Currently, the four countries in the region with the largest sources of electricity are Indonesia, Vietnam, Thailand, and Malaysia, which generate more than 80% of the total electricity demand in the region. Darshana Gauchen, EAC News. Member of the Standing Committee of the Central Committee of the Cambodian People's Party and Chairman of the Central Youth Committee of the CPP, Lieutenant General Homan Knight, has given a five-point response to an unnamed person, most likely opposition leader Sam Nang Si, to explain the allegations that have been made against him. Speaking at a meeting with members of the Working Group of the Cambodian Youth Organization in East and Southeast Asia in Phnom Penh on the 10th of September, Holman Knight said that his nomination as the future Prime Minister of Cambodia by the CPP was the collective decision of the party standing committee. He added that if he does become Prime Minister in the future, he cannot do this work alone as there must be the youth of the party to help him lead the country. He reprimanded an unnamed person, likely referring to opposition leader Sam Rang Si, whom he refers to as Om, saying that this person should look at the affairs of the party he supports rather than at the affairs of other parties. Hun Manat said that he never had any problems or issues with Sam Rang Si, but Rang Si is always bringing him up as the subject of attacks. Hi, Om Ot Mien Piep Khmer In. Why do you say that? 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 Regarding Sam Rang Si's suggestion that Hun Manat is still young but managed to attain a senior position in charge of the elderly, Hun Manat replied that it was important that he led the institution to progress, unlike Sam Rang Si who leads the institution to disintegration. ហើយលោកអំថាខ្ញុំក្មេងទៅគប់ខងមកនេះលោកអំកំប្លេចថាលោកអំជាកាន់សញ្ជាតិប្រាំងណាហើយប្រធានាធិបតីប្រាំងម
Regarding allegations that Holmana had done no work, he replied that he did not want to show much of the work he had done yet, as the results are more important than the showmanship. <laughs> ចេះវៃតម្លៃបច្ចុប្បន្នកាលរបស់ខ្លួនដើម្បីជាមូលដ្ឋានដើរទៅមុខទៀតគេហៅថាមនុស្សគ្មានមូលដ្ឋានគ
Dr. Alvandin further added, it is noteworthy that the world has praised Cambodia for being able to return to a normal life. However, she continues to call on the public to participate in the protection of life and stand in line with the principles set out towards achieving a new normal in the post-COVID-19 context. She also said that for additional COVID-19 doses to be taken in the future, the ministry will continue to conduct further study and examine scientific possibility. It should be noted that the World Health Organization has not presented any documents or guidelines for Cambodia to receive a sixth booster dose yet. According to the Ministry of Health, as of Wednesday, 14th September 2022, over 15.1 million people in Cambodia have received at least the first dose of the COVID-19 vaccine, while over 14.5 million have received a second dose. Additionally, over 10.1 million have received a third dose, over 4.1 million have received a fourth dose, and over 780,000 people have received a fifth dose. In total, around 94.9% of Cambodia's 16 million population has been fully vaccinated against COVID-19. Darshana Gauchen, EAC News. The Thai ambassador to Cambodia has expressed his appreciation to the Cambodian government for its resilient leadership in all areas as well as for maintaining strong ties between Cambodia and Thailand. EAC News reporter Darshana Gauchen has more details. A meeting between senior Cambodian and Thai officials took place on Tuesday morning at the Royal Cambodian Armed Forces headquarters in the presence of the Deputy Commander-in-Chief of the Royal Cambodian Armed Forces, Lieutenant General Hun Manait, and the Ambassador of the Kingdom of Thailand in Cambodia, Panyarak Pultap. During the meeting, the Thai ambassador praised the good cooperation between Cambodia and Thailand, which has been maintained even during the COVID-19 pandemic. He said, Despite the circumstances of the COVID-19 outbreak, trade activities between the two countries continues to run smoothly, which has allowed this closeness to continue to strengthen and expand in the future. He also expressed his appreciation for the rapid development and growth Cambodia has made in all areas, including in the defense sector, under the leadership of the Royal Government of Cambodia. In response, Lieutenant General Hun Manait also spoke of the strong bilateral relations and good cooperation between the two countries within both regional and international forums. Regarding the cooperation between the two countries' militaries, the Royal Cambodian Armed Forces Deputy Commander-in-Chief highlighted the much progress has been made. He also added that the cooperation between the two militaries has been smooth and has achieved good results, reflected in the development of closer relations between its units, especially in the conduct of training and joint exercises. It should be noted that the conditions on cooperation between the Army of the Royal Cambodian Armed Forces and the Army of the Royal Thai Army was officially signed on 3 February 2022. Lieutenant General Hun Manait also thanked Thai Ambassador Panyarak Pultap for his efforts and achievements made in strengthening and enhancing relations between the two countries' armies and peoples. These include providing development assistance and mutual support during the COVID-19 crisis and Thailand's support for Cambodia's 2022 ASEAN chairmanship and measures taken towards resolving the crisis in Myanmar. He added that this also reflects the spirit of friendship, respect between the two countries and peoples as neighbors as well as ASEAN members. Darshan Agauchen, EAC News.
If it's happening and you need to know about it, you'll get it all right here. EAC News brings you updates and breaking news in English across all of our platforms and channels. The EAC News app, YouTube, Facebook, Telegram, Twitter, and our website, www.eacnews.asia. Join me and the rest of the EAC News team every day on your favorite channels. EAC News, Cambodia made clear. Prime Minister Hun Sen, the chairman of ASEAN in 2022, has announced that he will continue to strive for better ASEAN cooperation with the People's Republic of China to ensure the sustainability and resilience of socio-economic development in the region. EAC News reporter Dajan Gojin has the details. At the opening of the 19th China ASEAN Expo 2022 held on Friday morning, Prime Minister Hun Sen stated that ASEAN-China economic cooperation has accomplished many achievements since the signing of the ASEAN-China Framework Agreement on Comprehensive Economic Cooperation in 2002, as well as other subsequent signings of ASEAN-China Free Trade and Investment Agreements. As the chair of ASEAN, Cambodia supports the initiative to promote the ASEAN-China Free Trade Agreement to a new level and believes that we must pay more attention to further expanding and deepening the scope of ASEAN-China economic cooperation, particularly focusing on minimizing barriers to trade in goods, services and investment, as well as promoting the development of digital economy, green growth and capacity building of small and medium enterprises. The Prime Minister said, I am confident that the implementation of the RCEP agreement starting this year will not only create and bring more trade and investment opportunities for countries in the region, but will also significantly contribute to the growth of the mentioned sectors, and especially will act as the core framework for building a version 3.0 ASEAN-China free trade area in the future. Taking this opportunity, the ASEAN chair also thanked the Chinese government for always giving high priority to supporting the development and progress of ASEAN. He announced that Cambodia will continue to work towards strengthening ASEAN cooperation with the PRC to ensure the sustainability and resilience of socioeconomic development in both regions. China was recognized as an ASEAN dialogue partner in July 1996 in Jakarta, Indonesia. China has retained its position as ASEAN's largest trading partner since 2009. Trade between ASEAN and China has more than doubled since 2010 from $235.5 billion to $507.9 billion in 2019. Darshan Agauchen, EAC News. Prime Minister Hun Sen recalled the work the late Japanese Prime Minister Shinzo Abe did to benefit Cambodia-Japan's relations while meeting with the former president of the Japan International Cooperation Agency on Friday morning. EAC News reporter Anthony Ellis has the story. Speaking at a meeting with the former JICA president, Kitaka Shinichi, at the Peace Palace on Friday morning, Prime Minister Hun Sen said that during Abe's tenure, he helped establish good relations between Cambodia and Japan and provided continuous assistance to the Cambodian government. As seen through the construction of the Kinzana Bridge and Nek Lung Bridge and National Road No. 1 and National Road No. 5. In addition, the Prime Minister said that the late Shinzano Abe also assisted Cambodia in the field of education by helping building schools for Cambodia throughout the Japan Parliamentary Association. The Prime Minister's assistant, Ng Sopolet, told reporters after the meeting that the Prime Minister Hun Sen also spoke of Abe's high intention to regional and humanitarian work, adding that he regularly attended the Japan Mekon meetings no matter how busy he was, and every time he left, Abe would talk about getting support for the Japanese people who had been kidnapped by North Korea. 
The former JICA president thanked Prime Minister Hun Sen for his condolences of the death of Shinzo Abe and said that Cambodia is an important partner to Japan. Prime Minister Hun Sen said that the death of Shinzo Abe felt like the loss of a friend who had helped Cambodia in difficult times. Shinzano Abe was one of Japan's longest serving prime ministers. He was assassinated by a gunman while he was giving a speech on 8th of July for the Japanese upper house election campaign in the western city of Nara. His death shocked many world leaders around the world who have expressed their deepest condolences, including Prime Minister Hun Sen. The Cambodian Prime Minister is expected to pay his last respects to the late Shinzano Abe in Tokyo, Japan, on the 26th to the 28th of September. Anthony Ellis, EAC News. Prime Minister Hun Sen has noted that despite the threat of COVID-19, the ASEAN Free Trade Agreement continues to show good potential and benefits to countries in the region. EAC News reporter Dachana Gochin has more. During a meeting with the Director General of the World Intellectual Property Organization, Darren Tang, at the Peace Palace on Friday morning, Prime Minister Hun Sen requested the World Intellectual Property Organization to register Cambodia's geographical crops, and he also informed the Director General on the increase in trade between countries in the region in spite of COVID-19, which indicates that the ASEAN Free Trade Agreement was successful in bringing about good results during the pandemic. The Prime Minister remarked that he could see trade between Cambodia, Thailand, and Vietnam growing through the ASEAN Free Trade Agreement in 2020 and 2021. The ASEAN Free Trade Agreement is a trade bloc agreement by the Association of Southeast Asian Nations that supports domestic trade and production in all ASEAN countries and facilitates economic integration with regional and international allies. The agreement entered into force across ASEAN in 2015. Darshana Gochen, EAC News. A spokesperson for the Secretariat of State for Civil Aviation has said that Cambodia may enter the same growth path as before the COVID-19 outbreak as the number of passengers and the amount of air traffic in Cambodia has steadily increased. Speaking in a press conference on the five-year performance of the Secretary of State for Civil Aviation on Friday morning, spokesperson Sin Jan Sarevata said that Cambodia appears to be returning to a pre-pandemic growth path, noting that the rate of airline connections and the number of passengers has increased by August 2022. He said, As of August 2022, 25 airlines have been reconnected, with the number of passengers steadily increasing from month to month. The steady increase in passenger traffic and air traffic indicates that Cambodia is gradually returning to the growth path from before the COVID-19 pandemic. According to the spokesperson, over the past eight months of 2022 and as of the end of August, there were a total of 1,133,905 passengers arriving in Cambodia, indicating an increase of 24% from July 2022 and an increase of nearly 600% compared to the time period in 2021. However, compared to the same eight-month period in 2019, which acts as the baseline year before COVID-19, passenger traffic is still down 76%. Aircraft traffic, which includes all flight landings and takeoffs, as of the end of August 2022, amounted to a total of 15,521, indicating an increase of 66% compared to July 2022 and an increase of more than 123% compared to the same period last year in 2021. However, compared to the same eight-month period in 2019, aircraft traffic is still down 78%. Regarding air freight traffic, the total weight of cargo brought into Cambodia was 38,783 tons as of August 2022. However, there was a decrease of more than 4% from the previous month of July and a decrease of more than 10% compared to the same period last year. When compared to the same eight-month period in 2019, there is an observed 20% decrease. Recently, the aerospace company Boeing, in collaboration with the International Civil Aviation Organization, the International Air Transport Association, the Airport Council International, and other stakeholders conducted a study which revealed that by the end of 2023 or the beginning of 2024, the number of air passengers in Cambodia is expected to be equal to that observed in 2019. That is to say, Boeing expects the number of air passengers to increase in Cambodia by the end of 2023 or the beginning of 2024 if no further problems occur.
Thanks for watching the weekly round up here on EAC News channel. For more breaking news and updates, check our website easynews.asia or search EAC News on Telegram, Smart TV, or at your favorite app store. More from EAC News team on Monday night at 8 p.m. See you then.